Hello, um, I'm Philip Meyer. I'm working for Sysmocom a um, couple, of, uh, a bit less than a year now. Um, I will show you um, um, how to use the Osmos Zip connector. Um, whoops. What is this? On my laptop, I see the slide, but. I don't know what happened. The laptop showed the slide, but the beam are not um, probably this digital stuff here on the display board. Yeah, anyway, the project is uh, around for uh, about a year now. And um, basically, what it does is adds uh, a SIP trunk interface um, to uh, Osmo, uh, to Osmo NetBay. Uh, and yeah, so respectively, also to the, uh, in future, to, to the uh, Osmo uh, BSC. Um, the BSC uh, MSC split is not uh, fully done yet, but uh, things are on the way. Um, so uh, by using the software, we can um, connect um, Osmo NetBay um, to a um, VoIP, voice over IP um, PBX. And um, yeah, it's it's not the case that it haven't been possible before. It was possible before using uh, the LCR software. That's the Linux core router. Um, but the setup for that was a lot more complicated. I remember back in the days when I spent my first months uh, getting all the uh, um, OpenBSC that was uh, with the BS11 back in the days. It took me months to get that running. But it, it took me even more time to get the LCR running. It was uh, a really complicated thing. So I'm happy to introduce the Osmo uh, zip connector today, which uh, makes things a lot, of e a lot easier. So again, uh, the laptop shows the slide, but um, yeah. Okay, so there we have it. Um, that's an overview of uh, of an average uh, Osmo uh, um, a network with Osmo components. Um, that's basically how you would set it up. Of course, you have the uh, BTS, and uh, yeah, I have to mention um, this uh, graph doesn't cover the uh, old-fashioned um, uh, E1 um, uh, E1 uh, protocols. Um, it's uh, the talk also only focuses of the uh, of an all-IP network. That's important to know because uh, voice traffic would be handled different on, on, on an E1 line, of course. So the BTS is uh, connected to Osmo NITB and um, then uh, it would connect to uh, to some intermediate layer back in the days that was um, the LCR, and that would connect to asterisk. For example, that's only an example. It, it would work with any um, with any PBX software. Um, yeah, so we want to replace this uh, huge uh, um, LCR blob. It also which offers a lot of features we don't really need. Of course, if you have already, IS, if, if you need ICN features and we have used it already, it's not a good option to, to replace it. But if you are only interested in having the web support in uh, Osmo Nippi, um there's a lot of clutter we, 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 don't, we don't really need. I remember I had, to I had to configure call routes here and all that stuff that, that's not lo no longer needed. So we just put a, basically a simple component there, um, which is the Osmo SIP connector. Um, we have a closer look uh, to this uh, in the next slide. Um, yeah, in um, this slide, I don't show how the voice traffic is routed. It's, of course, in an all IP network that will be RTP. So, this have a. Yeah, good that it works. Uh, that is, um, so, let's have a look, closer look to, um, to, to how things work. Um, here I, I um, shown the BTS, of course, and then we have the Osmo NITB and the Osmo SIP connector. Um, the both are connected using a uh, uh, um, mobile network uh, call controlled uh, sort of protocol. It's in reality, it's, it's uh, only uh, primitives. The primitives are well defined. Uh, GSM of here or seven, but um, of course, how you implement the, uh, the primitives is up to you. Um, so that's a connection that happens over an 
Unix domain socket, so they both have to be on the same machine. But since this is a very lightweight component, it's uh, no no problem to do that. Um, yeah, and um, then we have. Um, oh yeah, but there's one thing left uh, uh, important, which is important to mention: the call control. So the way how the call is handled is already implemented in Osmo NitB. So um, we um, abandon the uh, call control implemented here. We just turn it off and use the call control stack implemented there. And then the uh, uh, at the at the uh, output, so to say, we have a, a real zip trunk that carries uh, all the signaling traffic. Um, including the DTMF tone, and there's something special to have the DTMF tone handling. Um, the, as you can see, the Osmo SIP connector is only connected inside the, um, the uh, signaling traffic. It's, uh, it doesn't even see the RTP voice, so if you want to inject or handle DTMF tones, you would have to uh, look and pro uh, process them into the RTP seam, so it's not that done here. It uses SIP info messages, uh, which is uh, standardized by some RFC from Kaplan. Uh, I don't know the exact number, uh, but anyway. Um, so that's that's important. The uh, the Osmo SIP connector is, has no ability to process any RTP or alter the voice traffic. Um, yeah, the um, um, zip trunk uh, has no authentication implemented, so um, when using it, there has to be a bit of care applied uh, to, to security considerations. Of course, you you don't have to uh, uh, let that on the put that on the internet somewhere. Um, yeah, um, and of course, everything is happening via IP TCP IP. Um, so, um, yeah. The uh, RTP voice stream, as I said, all, uh, uh, contains all the uh, voice traffic here, and it's uh, tapped directly at the BTS. Usually, uh, an RTP stream uh, is uh, connected, is, is routed from the origin uh, to the very end, or there may be RTP, RTP proxies in between. In this simple graph, it origins at the, at the BTS and is then routed to the PBX or uh, other end, uh, whatever that is. Um, the uh, important to know here, there's no transcoding happened. I mean, there's no component here in that uh, stream whatsoever, so no transcoding is happening. It's just the encoding as you would have it on the air interface as well. Um, so that is a good thing at the ba and a bad thing at the uh, same time. You get the undiluted uh, RTP stream and can process them um, uh, how you want. Um, but uh, also your PBX software has to support it, of course, or your uh, your other your call party. So maybe the uh, PBX has to do some transcoding and has to support the codecs you use on the air interface. Um, yeah, and uh, the uh, of course it's UDP. Uh, you already know that for sure. Um, so. There we have it. So, um, the Osmo zip connector is basically acting as a as a translating entity between the um, MNCC protocol and between uh, zip. So, when the call control when the call uh, control is processed in here, at the same time it interacts with the zip trunk. Um, Basically translates the behavior on the call, uh, on the GS classic GSM call control side to uh, the zip trunk web uh, side. Um, yeah, there's one thing left I wanted to point out. Yeah, um, some of you might already have some experience with uh, Open BTS. Um, there, it's done different. The Open BTS. Uh, um, Software is um, uh, more behaving like a VoIP phone. In in this uh, particular setup, we have uh, a zip trunk, so that has, uh, has to be to uh, be that might 
lead to some confusion if you configure it wrongly at your PBX software. You have to configure a zip tank interface at the PBX and uh, yeah, route your uh, numbers then. By the way, the authentication still stays as it need be. So in terms of authentication, that already uh, that still happens here. It's still the classic interface with the um, with the HLR and stuff. Um, yeah, so let's uh, have a look at uh, the configuration. Uh, even if it's very simple, uh, we can go through that. So the first thing you have to do on the Osmo NITBase side is to disable the internal call control and basically hand all things over to uh, the Osmo SIP connector. And yeah, here I have sample command line. You might, you, you for sure you already uh, know most of the stuff. Uh, pass the config file, which I don't touch, by the way. So the config file of the Osmo NITB completely remains untouched. It's uh, really just uh, <laughs> this command line switch here, the M. You can also use the uh, smaller letter, uh, letter M, but that's deprecated. Um, with the capital M, you have to apply pass to your Unix domain sockets. That's your interface between the Osmo SIP connector. Um, yeah. So. Here, that's uh, a config file snippet for the Osmo SIP connector itself. So we are already there. So there's, of course, not much to configure. You just set up the uh, pass to the Unix domain socket. And by, by the way, by picking uh, different passes there, you could also have um, different instances in parallel. Um, yeah, and the next thing is, uh, apart from the Unix domain sockets, you just uh, configure uh, IP address at the port. Important here is, and that's very important, you, you normally have uh, Osmo zip connector, Osmo NITB, and your PBX, which might be Asus or something else, on the same machine. And um, yeah, you might think, ah, then I just put uh, uh, the localhost IP address. But that wouldn't work because um, these IP addresses are also used to negotiate the RTP traffic and the BDS, of course, in most cases, most setups it will be outside of your machine. Um, I have setups where I can run the Osmo BTS um, software on my localhost as well, and then I can put the localhost there. But yeah, just to keep that in mind, you use the, you use the IP address uh, of your machine that is also reachable for, from outside for the RTP stream. And yeah, you have a remote and a, a local IP address. In this case, they are the same um, if your PBX were at some remote location, of course, you would have some different IP there. Um, yeah, and then you, you simply start it. Um, the minus C, by the way, is, is, I think that's common with all Osmo products, is always for the config file. It should have some standard name, which I don't know. I usually do it that way. And once you start it, it by the way, it doesn't matter which, in which order you start it. You just start the Osmo SIP connector and see NITB. They will find it, negotiate each other via the Unix domain socket and uh, will negotiate with the PBX software. And then you should be able to make calls uh, just as normal. Then you have it, your, um, your network in the box with uh, VoIP backhaul, so to say. Um, yeah, there's a detailed information in the internet uh, with a how-to with a sample configuration files you find there for downloading at our wiki. Uh, the pass is a bit longer, but I'm sure the slides are handed out afterwards anyway. Um, yeah, you also find it with Google when you Google for Osmo SIP connectors and you will immediately point it to the how-to and that in detail explains with, with, with sample configuration files how to set it up. It's really not too difficult. And yeah, I was very happy that uh, the burden of LCR was taken from me and I have a simple component now to use. So yeah, that's it. Um, are there questions? Uh, yeah, we need a mic. Uh, my question is, uh, when you use the Osmo SIP connector and you point it to something like asterisk, um, a few things. One, the registration is uh, still maintained exclusive, like uh, a registration of valid peers is still maintained exclusively by the NITP. Yes. Okay. And then the other question is, um, does it pre it presents to Asterix uh, not with uh, any registration request, just with peers? It just is a peer interface. 
basically just says here's the call, uh, do something with it, and then goes up into your uh, dial plan, whatever, and uh, the call gets uh, uh, connected. Um, yeah, there was. Uh, yeah. Who was next? Uh, yes. Uh, on the slide, you showed SIP over TCP. Is it SIP over TCP or SIP over UDP? It's it's over TCP. UDP or TCP? <laughs> Uh, sorry, uh, it's uh, yeah, TCP IP. But it, it's UDP. No, no, the RTP stream is UDP. But ZIP, ZIP still remains... Uh, it's UDP. What? It's UDP. ZIP is UDP. Oh, okay. sorry. <laughs> I confused the two. Yeah. As per spec, it can be both, but uh, I think we're using UDP only, like oh, most okay. people. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Hello. Uh, can you support SMS? So convert SIP symbol to SMS. Oh, I, 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 do, I must <laughs> confess uh, that I don't know if that will make it to the through the Osmo SIP uh, connector as well. I think not. I think that's still delivered uh, with the NITB and uh, with the uh, uh, mobile switching center in a classic way. Yeah, indeed, we have an S we ha already have an external interface for for handling uh, handling SMS and that's SMPP. Um, so uh, there was no uh, need uh, to have yet another interface for SMS. So I mean, if you wanted to do SMS over SIP, I would I would recommend rather to go the route uh, to to gate uh, to either directly interface with uh, SMPP or to then try to translate the SMPP into into SIP again by an external uh, component, but uh, it, it is already exposed in some way. But okay, there was Keith next and then Alexander over there. Yeah, so I've done that. I have that working SIP simple to SMS oh. gateway um, with free switch chat plan. But so my question was about the um, Osmo NITB RTP proxy mode with I think is capital P switch that when you implement that, is, is that, how does that, Operating in this way, with in, in relation to the RTP stream UDP directly from the BTS to your SIP, so your PBX, uh, because uh, this is something that's still not quite clear to me. That's not operating then, so there isn't um, audio going through the NITB. Mm -hmm. Because uh, uh, do I don't know uh, exactly that. I didn't use this option before. Maybe Harold can say more. Ah, <laughs> uh, the expert. Hi. Um, no, it goes directly from the BTS to the PBX. Ah, okay, as I as I expected. So what, yeah. happens if you enable, what happens if you enable the RTP proxy? Uh, it will be just ignored because the, the MNC interface is, uh, is used to establish your RTP socket, and it's implemented in a way that it just forwards it to IP-based uh, base stations. So if you want, ever want to add E1 base stations to use the Osmo SIP connector, we would probably then use the RTP proxy to, oh. to map trout to, to RTP first. But for the current use case, it should go directly from the BTS to the PBX. Mm -hmm. Okay, so mention handover. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, one missing part of the sample Osmo SIP connector is the, the concept of handover. Or actually, it's left to the PBX to either discover changes in RTP source IP uh, so source address uh, um, source identifier, or we need to have a reinvite, which is not implemented yet. Yeah, so yeah, one, one one more thing which is not yet implemented in uh, Osmo SIP connector, just as a warning to to the users, is that. Um, the hold feature is uh, hold call feature is not implemented yet because it also requires a SIP reinvite, uh, to which I think is also in to do list. I hope. Um, and in one more correction to the slide previously, if you could uh, go back to the screen viewer, uh, to the, the diagram with uh, oops to with LCR. Uh, one sec. That's at the very beginning. Yeah, and then one more. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So basically, uh, yes, yes, here. So there, it, uh, here you mentioned that it's connected to Asterix via via chain LCR, which is the hard way to do that. And Oops. I, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure it's even supported. Like it's been supported anymore or thing like this. And 
Uh, the easier way is to do exactly as you do with Osmo SIP connector. Uh, so uh, basically you use LCR as a bridge between MNCC and a SIP trunk. And in this case, configuration is actually really simple. Mm -hmm. It's just a couple lines in the configuration. And I think, I think it's published on the wiki. If not, it's, mm -hmm. we can publish it. It's just a few lines of configuration. It's universal. Uh, it's not it's not complicated. The most complicated part is, comp is compiling LCR, which mm -hmm. is okay. Um, just again, just from practical perspective. So because we are still using LCR because we need the call hold and uh, and uh, um, and some other features which LCR supports. Mm -hmm. Uh, hi. So you mentioned that uh, there is no transcoding done. The you know, audio stream is passed directly. Yes. Uh, is there support for um, AMR and dynamically changing the codec um, depending on the channel condition and stuff like that? Oh, I don't uh, really know that. Um, probably it has to be supported by the by the other party because yeah, so it's it's not uh, Osmo Zip connector doesn't see the. Um, the RTP stream anyway. So if there's some changes, um, it would be up to the other party to handle that. Yeah. So basically, uh, changes in AMR, in AMR modes are done uh, inside the RTP stream, and uh, on the on the SIP side, you only announce supported modes. So and then it's up to RTP uh, stream to. So it's up to the headers in AMR packet to announce which mode is used for this specific packet. So it, you don't have to do anything on SIP side to enable this. That said, I don't think Asma Com right now supports dynamic AMR change, I'm not sure. It does? OK. Yeah. Uh, so one reason to replace LCR was not only that like the classic ISDN interface is difficult, but we saw severe reliability issues in the field. So that after a day, it stopped working, connecting calls and, and other parts. And uh, we also didn't want to do busy polling for, for the sockets, but be more efficient. So we wrote uh, the simple utility. And of course, for call holding or conference calls, patches are more than welcome. Um, the other part for AMR here, it's not supported in a way that you could make really good use of it. So it, it starts with the radio interface where you have your multi-rate configuration sent to the device with histories of when to switch codes, codecs on, on the BTS itself. That's something we probably send but don't really configure correctly or don't implement correctly in the Osmo BTS. Also for the SIP part, yes, there is the initial mode, there is the mode set. But if you look at all other PBX with AMR, they're severely limited in, in what you could do with AMR and what actually works, or who actually looks at the STP file. So we are probably in, in, in the same class of, of doing a, a sloppy job there, but um, it, it gets us far enough. OK, yeah, there's a question still. Ah, there yes, was one more back there. Too. Okay, because we again running out of time, so uh, this will be the last question now. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Um, so we switched over to using Osmo SIP connector, and we've been seeing that some phones can negotiate early media, but others can't. So we're wondering um, how that's supported, and uh, yeah, we're wondering how you can implement early media support. Yeah, that maybe happens. Holger can something say more about this. Um. So in fact, we didn't support it until recently. I don't know if you have updated recently. Yeah. Oh, a few weeks could be OK. Uh, one of the issues like when to connect the audio and when actually the BTS is receiving parts. So there was a, a behavior difference between uh, Osmo BTS and classic Nano BTS of when it would receive data from a socket. So in theory, for the RTP handling, you can have like send only, receive only, or send and receive. And the way receive only was implemented uh, in, in Osmo BTS didn't allow 
for audio to be received, but there's a, a workaround in Osmo Zip Connector and I plan to make it more proper in Osmo BTS. Okay, but basically you don't know anything about phone specific because it, it was no okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah, again sorry. Um we have to move on to the next talk. Um thank you for the talk. Pip. Yeah.